For the best liberty-oriented talk 24-7, visit lrn.fm. Well, since I supposedly have an unusual take on everything, presumably I can come up with an unusual take on the Jordanian pilot burned alive. Believe it or not, I actually have some, well, I don't know if I would call them sympathies, but some tolerance of the idea of monarchy. Uh, And uh, if there's, uh, you know, well, one of the countries that tends to have relatively sympathetic monarchs is Jordan. It's an example of a monarchy that's sort of benign and sort of works, relative to a lot of the other governments out there anyway. But like any other place, it is subject to the what I call George Bush syndrome, where a major atrocity committed against a country results in this sort of nationalistic, the government can do no wrong mentality in the people. In the United States, that mentality lasted for for a couple of years, and in some ways, it's still going on 15 years after the 9/11, or 14 years after the 9/11 attacks. Under this current glow of "we're the good guys, we're so awesome," the Jordanian government will have an opportunity to commit unspeakable abuses. Whether it will or not, I don't know. One of the things that does kind of hack me off is reading these newspaper reports. Uh, talking about how Jordan has executed militants who were planning attacks or who committed attacks. Well, remember, those are <laughs> those are militants who are accused of planning attacks or carrying out attacks. I mean, is there a video of them confessing somewhere? If is that video, uh, are we sure that the video is not? You know, if there is a confession, does it involve? duress? Uh, Did they make videos announcing what they were going to do before they tried to do it? Are we sure the videos are authentic, not created under duress? Those are the questions I bet very few people will be asking. The other question that isn't going to get asked much in the glow of excitement of we're we're the civilized people and they're the savages, under the glow of that, the question would be, what exactly you know, these uh, uh, fighters that are going and bombing uh, targets in the Islamic State, what exactly are they hitting, uh, and what exactly is around what they're hitting, who exactly is being killed, and who exactly is being injured? I would be pretty amazed if uh, this picked-over target list of alleged Islamic radical hangouts can really be bombed by Jordan without serious risk to bystanders. I mean, and the Americans in Afghanistan are coming up with, what, an 8 to 1 kill ratio when it comes to the number of civilians they're killing for every terrorist they get? Can Jordan do any better? Well, maybe it can. It's not hard to improve on the feds. But this kind of situation just continues to remind me, as the Russian situation reminds me in Ukraine, there needs to be a new method of war fighting. We've got to, there's got, we've got to come up with something better than suspected truck park or 16-year-old Denver boy visiting Middle East. Certainly in the, Mar- in the American case, it won't be hard to improve on CIA extraordinary rendition and torture. But as always, it's all about the root of the problem. A better way of fighting will not get developed until it's required or until there is competition in the field of defense. I mean, real competition. Right now you have, in a sense, competition between countries, right? So the United States is in competition with the Islamic State. The Russians are in conflict with the Ukrainian government. The Americans are probably sometimes in some competition with Jordan as to whether, how, what kind of methods they can come up with to, to make an appropriate attack. But no one in America is in competition with the federal government to come up with a better way of killing bad guys. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Raytheon might be in conflict with Halliburton or whatever they call it now to get a contract from this monopoly. But again, The monopoly itself does not have any direct competition uh, from another institution trying to do a better job of protecting us. 
And if it did have, have such competition in the current environment, it would be comparable to the kind of competition that public schools get, right? They get very limited competition from private schools and homeschoolers. It's not enough to really change the fundamental problem. Mark Edge from Free Talk Live thinks that the solution to this monopoly issue is to have multiple governments functioning in the same geographic location. I'm not sure if that's the exact solution I favor, but something's got to change. You can't, the federal government being a monopoly, having a monopoly over defense, has created a situation that is probably best defined as, I mean, the, it would not be an overstatement to say that it is a threat to the existence of civilization on this planet. The Soviets were even more guilty on this score uh, in their time, and today the Russians and Chinese are, are somewhat guilty, but uh, the folks who brought you mutually assured destruction are still in charge of so-called defense, which is now all offense, apparently. Can't do that. Federal agents on the streets of Keene, New Hampshire. They're investigating reports of an unlicensed radio station said to be broadcasting LRN.FM. So why all the fuss? What is LRN.FM? Well, it's probably not something these agents want you to listen to. It's a 24-hour news talk broadcast, all pro-liberty. A true authoritarian free zone. Tune in at LRN.FM to listen or broadcast their signal. LRN.FM, Feds don't want you to hear them.